Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Yo, welcome back. Hope you survived April Fool's Day unscathed. And sorry that some of you were disappointed when you found out that neither our president nor the Russian one were arrested. Vladimir, you're welcome. Come home. Nastarovia. Whatever that means. But thanks for joining us. This is Wow, What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. This is Wow, What a Week. What a Week. You can't make this shit up. Our guest is in the building, and as her full name will indicate, her parents prayed for joy. Then they and the rest of us reaped the benefits. Well, they got a bit of money too, I'd like to think. She has the durability of a taxi door, and to paraphrase a line of hers, the confidence and defiance of a cockroach. Please welcome to me, the Roach Morake. <laughs> Keeping that, do you know that? I'm so keeping that. To me, the approach, Marag. Yes. But do not approach. <laughs> Walu, ma. <laughs> also, it's my Mrapa name as well. I like it. Exactly. Oh, snap. Really welcome. Thank you for having me, bro. Yo, dude. Look at you. Free. Free from what? On a whole podcast from BCCSA, my friend. Me, when you open your mouth, I'm like, oh, this guy. You know, it's actually sweet coming from you because between me and you, I think we've had our fair share of complaints from radio listeners that had no business listening to us on the radio because they knew what they were tuning into. Yeah. we. we so how many have you survived? I think we're in the Hall of Fame at BCCSA. Yeah. How many uh, have you survived? Oh, honey, I'm a 100% win rate me. Didn't lose a single case. In fact, most of them didn't even make it to court and the ones that did, I won. Buena. I lost one um, on 5FM. I played Arthur's song, Don't Call Me Gafford. Oh. And there was a white lady that complained. Like, why can't I call you Gaffer anymore? In, 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 in fact, and, and that was my argument, that the song is saying, do not call me this. Yeah. And then I, I found it rather rich that it was a, 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 a white tani yes. that went and complained. Yeah. And I was thinking, maybe it's guilty. Guilty, no, but I say guilty. Do I not offer credit? Let me tell you what it is. Tell me what it There's is. There's a certain sect, Hayabone, sure. who decide to be offended on our behalf. Because apparently oh. we're not smart enough to understand when we're yes, not facing. Yes, yes, yes. And we're not yes, smart yes. enough to be aware when our culture is being challenged. So they'll sign for so you. On our Offense. behalf, because we don't get it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, so I was fined 5,000 rand. Yo. And Arthur told one of the papers he'll pay the fine with me. Oh, from this um, lot of But I, 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 what lot of things? <laughs> <laughs> get into a lot of trouble for that work. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I paid. I paid, I paid 5,000 bucks. By yourself? Uh, by myself, yes. Wow. I was working at 5FM, so I was getting paid quite a lot. No, but did you call him and be like, ah, but my guy? I couldn't, I couldn't reach him. Did he ever buy you a beer at least? A beer? Arthur, buy anyone anything. Okay, let's leave him alone for yeah. a second. It's okay. Uh, hi, hi, Al. How are you doing? <laughs> we like you. If ever you need no, accommodation, call me. Wow. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> ah. ah. Do me welcome. So wrong. Thanks for having me. Been a fan forever. Stop it. Nothing but respect for you forever. Stop. And then I see you in a movie, The Honeymoon, yes. uh, the other day, and I was like, she kicks ass. Thanks, babe. You play Knox. Who is Knox in the Honeymoon movie? So Knox is Noku Tula Tlamini. Okay. And she is the daughter of a very famous actress who's passed on. Yes, yes, home. yes, yes. And that actress is played by Babe Stele. Oh, so chuffed. But but it's only her picture. It's only her picture. Like, how's that for acting? Né? Just your photo. Did she get paid for her picture making a cameo in the movie? That's actually a very good question. Because I know our producer, writer, director actually spoke to her and asked her if she could be my mom. As in, may I use your picture? Yeah. And she was like, oh, she was like hey, I'm too old to be to me's mom. And then she was like, well, in fairness, you've passed away years ago and then she was like cool I'm in um, and I was very very chuffed because we've got this gorgeous picture of her when she was blonde yes. and Knox is blonde yes, yes, you yes, know yes. kind of holding on to her mom sure. and she is uh, the third part of a threesome of friends which is Cat, Lou and Knox mm -hmm. and so she is that friend who tells you now what is something is messed up she's not yes. those friends who wait and go maybe the timing isn't right she goes no Chaba, that fire will burn you now so I'm going to tell you now in fact she's got probably the most sensitive red flag-o-meter yes. in the relationship. Ah, yes. 
Then we all need a friend like that. We all need a friend like Do that. Do you have a friend like that? I that have, calls you out yes. right now. Yes, but she does not waste time. Okay. Um, and um, I was channeling her, in fact. Ah, yes. You know, because what I like about Knox is is she's human in that. Mm. Yes, you see that she's there for her friends, but you realize she's not able to be there for herself. She yes. also needs to grow up. It, it's almost like she's running away from herself. Yes, and she needs someone to call her out the way she calls them out. Aren't I a great analyst? You are, when uh, oh, deep. Oh, it, it's, it's it's almost like. People who stay drunk because being sober is going to remind me of why I wanted to be drunk yes. in the first place. Yeah. That's what I picked up from her. Yes. Am I channeling Knox? You are channeling Knox. She reminded <laughs> me of me. I laugh a lot. Yes. You yes, knew yes. how much I hide behind laughter. Mm. And with Knox, she hides behind noise. Yes. And so it's nice to see her in a quiet moment. And that was a hard thing for me to play, uh, just in the terms of the challenge of doing the role. Because one thing I love about Bianca, she's about her subtext. Mm. You don't just cardboard acting. Oh, yeah. Bianca is the must then. It's Bianca her movie. Like, yeah, it's, must it's her movie. Must dance. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, it was really, and for all of us, she did that. She was like, play the tap subtext. We're all seeing what's happening, but we need to know this other process yes. is going on with you. And uh, So basically, the, don't just this. act. Don't just act. Be. Be. Think about this person. And I think that's why she also casts people she knows have that essence already of yes. the character. So you don't have to go fetch it far. Sure. Um, yeah, it's one of those movies where someone will say, ah, why aren't you guys just teaming like everyone else? I'm like, see it on the big screen and you'll see why you can't see it on a small screen fest. In fact, we watched it at um, Emperor's. Yes. Um, and they've got the most incredible screen. Hey. I've never seen you like that. You didn't live in color like that. Buena. But also because on the poster, uh, on the poster you can see a bit of her bum. Uh, but really? now, hey, you must look at the poster. Your bum is a bit there. No, it's just a bit of skin there, there. No, there. fresh. It's, it's you the cast, I'll take there. it. Anyway, so that screen, you know. It's amazing. So, so you have to watch it on the big screen. You have to watch it on the big screen, especially the action. How gorgeous does Zanzibar look? It does. It At, does. In that size, you feel like you're there. Like, I feel like I could smell my sweat watching it because that wasn't fake sweat. Like, in the beginning, makeup had to come and spritz me. Ah, uh, print, but... <laughs> But take five, they were like, Ay, she's fine, she's melting. Well, good. Yo. But listen, it's an incredible movie. Thank you. Uh, not that I'm trying to run away from the movie. You want to talk about other things. Yes, of but course. please go watch The Honeymoon. Honeymoon. It's All incredible. cinemas. In, 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 in fact, uh, because we, we, we have you here for Wow, What a Week, you can't make this ish up. Sorry, I can't even swear on my own show. I, I can't believe I'm so <laughs> in radio mode still. <laughs> One of the things you can't make up so I went to your uh, premiere with a friend of mine, uh -huh. and according to the uh, papers, we were very cozy. Oh, were we cozy? I didn't see you cozy with anyone. Maybe the definition of cozy is you pass them a drink and then they took it from your hand, and then I'm not even kissing up to you, bro. I didn't see you cozy up to I anyone. I don't remember being cozy. And then apparently we left to go to a hotel. Can you imagine two grown adults? Who are both divorced go into a hotel. Pick me. What are we doing at a hotel? Pick me, sir. Pick me, sir. To, I'm to sure do, you guys pay do, 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 you guys pay bond. I just want to answer this one. Okay, I'm okay. Sure go you guys ahead. pay bonds. Okay, 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 go ahead. I'm sure you guys pay bonds. Uh, yes, number uh, one. Two two bonds, yeah. Yeah. Number two, uh, I would have to follow you. To know when to a hotel. To know that you went to a hotel. Because we were in a place where you must walk all the way to parking. And, oh. the, and the car was right in front of the entrance. Oh, were well, you one of those who parked this side, not the underground? No, it's so how would anyone see that you went to a hotel? But that's what I don't understand. Why must papers embellish everything? Because people need to get paid. If you don't... Oh, yeah, it's sexier it's when it, you had a bit of sleep. Yes. And then they toys, went to a hotel. And you want them to move you up from page 18 to page 3 at uh, least so you can chow. Okay. So that, that's when I took abuse from newspaper and they imply, people. And they imply that's why we went to the hotel. To yeah. Do. To child. Yeah, so that's what the, for me, that's how I started treating uh, the bad news yes, or yes. people who just come at me unnecessarily mm. in media. I would go, well, we all have to send an invoice at the end of the month. Sure. I don't sure. know Skoloto Sadi Mani, so hey, I, I what they not need hold it against you that you're doing people. what you ought to yeah. do for yourself. You needed to submit. In fact, you talk about how Knox is almost constantly chasing anything but her reality. Yeah. You've been through a lot, though. Yeah. You know, from racial abuse on the radio, death threats, an accident that almost took you and your family out, and people who celebrated the fact that you and your family almost died in an accident. Yeah, that was hard. Take us through having to deal with that, because you can't switch it off. And yeah. even if you do, 
it's just for a minute. Yeah. And then it's back to your life again. I went on social media for a while. Yeah. Um, cause my son also got very ill around that time. I remember on one of the days, actually, um, I had to travel with protection and I had to remove my name from my car and all of that. You are lying. True story. So the death threats were that No, real. they were real. They were real. There was a time, um, somebody alerted me. They sent me a screen grab of a Facebook message cause there was a group and they were going, we've spotted her. She's on her way to Mpumalanga. You are lying. They gave the registration of the car they saw me in and they were like, who's that side? And I was like, okay, this is actually not a joke anymore. This is serious. And then I get a call. My son had turned blue. Um, he just stopped breathing and they'd rushed him to hospital. Mm. So now I had to come back and be like, yes. I need to go deal with my child. Sure. So it was easier to switch out outside noise because I had a focus, which was my baby yes. and my family. And to be honest, I also did switch off the me. I switched off and I went into hyper to me marake mode. Mm. So me so, so, no so, wasn't what, there. So what does to me marake mode Hyper like? to me marake mode is I switch on a switch and I'm in performance mode all the time. Ah, yes. I didn't switch off. I didn't go down. And the downside to that is it took, after having the car accident, for me to break down. I had a panic attack. Mm. Um, I went into depression. Mm. I had to go back into therapy on a serious level. I I fought because I had to be uh, put back on antidepressants and I didn't want to be on antidepressants. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's do everything else except antidepressants. Sure. So it was a hard time, but I had family around me and I had mm -hmm. strangers around me. I had different political figures around me who were just like, we've got you. Yes. So I felt like, okay, they've got me. Mm -hmm. Why am I worried? And eventually it blew over. And funny enough, three months later, I had another car accident. And I was in the middle of writing my book. And I was like, okay, now I feel like the universe is telling me something. Sure. You know, I need to stop. I need to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I think from that point onwards, which is 2018, my life changed. You know, I, I, I became a little bit more selfish. I became a little bit more self-aware. And so I'm glad that stuff happened, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it gave me focus. When... A lot happens within your life. Mm. Some relationships can't handle that pressure. Yeah. How did it affect your marriage? Oh, no, it was in cuck. It was already in cuck before this happened. Jeez. So we were already... Um, was it your mom jokes? Feeling... <laughs> <laughs> he did ask, why do I keep bringing the cuck jokes home? Like, why do we get the nonsense and when you're on stage, you're shining? Um, <laughs> so we had been uh, in therapy for about a year when this thing happened, mm. marital counseling. Sure. And... Just when we were starting to pick ourselves up, this happened. Just as you're starting to look sexy to each other yeah, again. Nah, you know, <laughs> um, and yeah, it did, I suppose, because also there comes a point where you feel like you're too much for your partner. It's yes. too much for them to carry. So you start to keep things to yourself and carry them by yourself. Meanwhile, what they're reading is, oh, I'm being shut out again. Oh, yes. So there's something going on here that yes. you clearly have decided I don't need to know. And then they have whatever response they have to that. Then, so Rauke, and then by the time we're meeting again at a halfway point, we're like, ah. and it's like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing? And 2019, in fact, I was, I was like, this is when it's over. Sure. Um, and the funny thing though is, then that's the year when we're going, ah, we're gonna call it quits. We then find out our green cards have been approved for America. I'm like, ah. Okay, wait. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's reevaluate speed a bit. Because you're approved as a couple, right? I approved as a couple. Hey, man. As a family. As a family. And so I'm like, this is either the breakup trip. Yes. Or this is the makeup trip. Absolutely. And I'm very grateful that we went, this is the makeup trip. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if the green cards had not been approved, hypothetically, where do you think your marriage would be right now? Based it on probably knowing be, what you know about the back then. It would probably be in a much better place even. Because I think then going into the pandemic mm. and all of that. Oh, you're going to be stuck in bed together anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think we would still be a different couple, but probably even better. Because the change of this transatlantic 
yes, the yes, change yes. with the pandemic, what it did to us financially. Um, look, we did better than a lot of people, mm. but it was still a big shift. Sure. And then now with us uh, resettling our careers in a whole other country mm. has presented a whole other phase of challenges for us. You know, so yeah, this thing. I was the same genre as a pandemic. Try Mary, yay! <laughs> Yo. And unfortunately, there is no vaccine. <laughs> none, none. Yeah, yeah. If I, you die, you die. Wear your hazmat situations <laughs> and just hope for the best. Um, but you know what I love? Yeah. We are now at a, at a at a at a stage where I always say, if it works out, it's gonna work the heck out, yes. and if it ends, it's gonna end beautifully oh, yes. because as people we've realized our appreciation of each other mm. and that's what matters. And that you're still a great team. We're still a great team. Whether there's love or not you're a great exactly. team. Exactly. Yes. And we're raising the dopest kids ever. Yes. So I'm like listen there's a project we got right. If project marriage is like done mm. project kids is flying. How's the move been? It's been insane. Yeah. So initially we were gonna to move to New York, you yeah. know, and that's where we started out. We could have afford it with budget head. Stop the train. Why America? So it's his dream. Since I've ever met him, like I've known him since university, sure. first year at Vets. Mm. So that's about that's about twenty three years of knowing someone. Yeah. And so he kept going to New York to do work. Uh, he'd been to Santa Barbara as well, mm. UK. And the one that never stopped was the story about New York, New yes. York, America, New York. And working in South Africa as a foreign national, sort of, because mm. uh, he's a naturalized sure. citizen. Um, you know, he's French speaking. His Sosotu is Sosotu Sepa coming, Salesotu. It's not like, you know, street, mm. um, doesn't speak Zulu does accents all kinds like from anywhere in the world he just felt like he wasn't really living up to his full potential in this country oh, yes. he'd written for everyone been in any everything mm. directed for mm. mom at some point did a lot of projects with people from the US and the UK and so he was like it doesn't make sense that my best work is overseas but I live here yeah and it's from a family that lives all over the world. Oh, yes. So I knew it was inevitable mm. that we're all going to have to pay. Eventually. And go eventually. I was really hoping for UK. Yeah. But US was the dream. And it made sense because then my I was looking at my career going, of course, stand-up comedy, I will thrive. Mm. You know, and my kids live on YouTube. So any They're American. They'll be fine. They're American. <laughs> They're already training. On God, on God. So, <laughs> so that that made sense. Yeah. And so in the, the, the tricky thing about the move now is I'm doing Marake here. Yes. Yeah, I go, but do you know who I am? Sure. You know, I just, I arrive and I get what I want. You get to the U.S. and it's like, oh, big fish. The small pond was nice. You're, you're rebuilding. Now you're from in the scratch. ocean. Yeah, from scratch. It's humbling. Yes. So it's been fantastic and frustrating at the same time because I'm so used to earning so much money. Yes. And then you get there and you're earning, you know, if you're anyhow. Earning. If you're earning. Nah, hey. yeah. But you're earning anyhow. Sure. And I'm like, I can't be earning anyhow. Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> you know, back home. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. I get my respect in New York and then I get to Atlanta. I feel like I'm hitting a brick wall, yes. you know. It's yeah, like why there's it's way relaxed, clicky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard, but I'm enjoying it because it's it's a new thing. It's like I'm rebuilding, I'm reversioning to be more right. But also, don't forget you're the roach. You survive everything. I survive everything. I belong everywhere. You survived racist <laughs> and death threats and a car accident and the BCCSA uh, and, and, and. I survived myself also. America is nothing. Dude. It's nothing. It's nothing. I, I won't nothing. lie. I won't lie. It does worry me, though, in, just in terms of gun violence. And yeah. just because that's just because I've lived in Joburg for so long yeah. and I've never had to sit around gunshots. Exactly. It's never been a reality for exactly. me. So when you... In, and we have guns. And we have guns for yeah. days, bro. Yeah. But we pull them out uh, according, yes. you know? Yes. Yes. So I, I feel like there it's a little bit wild, wild west. You, you're not entirely sure why. Please hold on. We are recording here. What are you doing? Oh, fainty, little. And please don't cut that out. I don't know who's upstairs and is dropping things. I'm saying, what if they fainted? Just now you find a guy collapsed. Oh, if they die, they die. Please ah. get them on camera because it would actually be good for ratings to have someone die in shot. Anyway, you were saying, I apologize. <laughs> Working with amateur. <laughs> so yeah. it's interesting because also, um, it's funny, you know, the first thing when you're a comedian, you go overseas, you go, you must try and reach out to Trevor Noor. Yeah, yeah, Trevor how far I get. I'm like, <laughs> why? Like, but I think that's the other thing, though, that people often assume 
we are all from the same commune. Right. So we lived together. Yes. Um, even like when I worked at the SABC, mm. people would always say to me, yeah, you know, uh, tell Zola I said, what's up? <laughs> like, I haven't seen Zola in 10 years. Yes. We don't live in a commune where we all wake up, we all have breakfast, it's like, home's on this door, and now it's time to do. But people treat you like we all live together. Yeah. And they assume, yeah, we all get along and say, I find that, and there's nothing like that. It's insane. But also, I, I'm not good at doing the baking plate thing. And maybe that's what slows down my career, but also I think it's the thing that helps me confidently say I built myself up. But also, if a relationship is not organically growing, yes. why should you force it because now we're in the same country? Exactly. Because if you right. organically fuck like scene with one another, yeah. it would have happened before you moved there. Right. Now all of a sudden, I'm in town, I was like, ah, sure, I'm fun. I'm fun. I'm fun. I'm fun. I also feel like in my own right, I will do what I need to do. I mean, I already did a, a project that was between uh, an American company and mm -hmm. Finland, and yeah. that happened on my own. So is the project yeah. finished? <laughs> hey. <laughs> So there, there are a lot of opportunities coming, and I think South Africa will, I, I will definitely do the country proud. Now, Habi does like quite a few accents, like you said. Yeah. Do you guys have a role play? And if you don't, if you did, which accent would actually get you going? Ooh, if I could get one of those Afro, Afro, I think Francophone accents. I don't want a French accent. I have French white dude from France. I oh, want, so you I want a guy fresh a off a boat? Or something. Fresh off the boat. Yeah, that yeah. one, you know. The one way when it sounds like this guy is as dark as night, is as dark as 1159. And or, or is a car guard. Not a car guard. The car don't have enough weight. Maybe a male nurse. <laughs> I once met a Congolese male nurse. Are you serious? He was, yeah, that, that cup of hot chocolate. No, no, but also, but Congolese men generally are very sexy. Oh. I mean, I'm a very straight man, but when I see a Congolese man, I'm like, You question yourself. Son. Eh? You, you like it? It's like, I think it'll be like, yeah. But it's a bit. What caught your attention this week? Let's talk about your car make this oh. shop. Not me minding my own business and somebody sends me the screen grab. Yeah. I can't remember this woman's name, but there's Trump holding up a fist. Oh, he did an Amanda. He did an Amanda. After his arraignment. He, so he does a whole Amanda. And there's Mandela next to him in this picture like this. And this woman has the audacity to say Trump is America's Nelson Mandela. I vomited in my mouth. My ancestors held their hands. I have never. I've, I Listen. He sh this, but he, I think he del this? he deliberately did the Amanda, so that he can almost martyr himself. It was deliberate. No man. I'm I'm, I'm surprised Donovan Moodley didn't put Amanda when, when 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 he was going for his. Um, no, but I think he was going for the parole board. Yes. Even Oscar Pistorius was in front of the parole board. I'm surprised he didn't do the Mandela. But it's, it, it just reminded me of the audacity of, yes. of, of rightists and right-wingers and white people with superiority complexes. Because I was like, that's also a black power sign. And, 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 and they're the same people then who carry on like there's a genocide against them. Yes, and well, we must get over well, it. They're and in danger. It, oh, gosh. And you move to that very country. Like that Are you guy. sure? You can come back home, eh? So that shocked me. Yeah. That shocked me. Because also, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting the things they like to channel. The people who are anti us. And yes. then when it suits them, they can come and appropriate our things. Because I don't know if you remember during the election, mm. there was this woman who was trending. She was oh, praying. No, some, oh. some American woman in a church. Okay. And she was like, they're praying for Trump to win. And she's like, the African angel are coming. They come from Africa. They landed from Africa. That. And this one was like, he's definitely going to lose because that's ancestors. <laughs> and those are not happy people. They, are, they don't want to jail. They're still upset that we got into the boat. <laughs> so I was scared. So I was like, that prayer works. Not the way she wanted. They were like, okay, we're well, coming. We're going to take out the trash. Continue. Bring us, call us in. And in fact, they're continuing, hence the arraignment. Thank you. And, and you know the wild thing about why, why Trump uh, was arrested the other day? Yeah. Is the, the fact that this is the mildest of the things he's done so far. This is the mildest. Doesn't it remind you of who's that mafia boss? Um, uh, Al Capone. Al Capone, because they couldn't arrest him. 
for all the bettas and the likes and what what they could only get him for tax. Exactly. It feels like a similar thing where they went, okay, so we can't really nail him for all those other things. But we know he I'm shagged Ali. the porn star, <laughs> and then we know he paid hash money. <laughs> so why not? Uh, In fact, speaking of porn stars, there is a adult shop in the UK, uh, and they had an ad. Uh, you know, uh, Prince Harry wrote a book, yeah. Tell All uh, yes. book. And uh, this ad has a gag ball. And um, they say something to the effect that Harry, um, something like, what, what, what do they say? Uh, um, Harry, not every, the, the silence is sometimes golden. And then there's a gag ball. And now this ad has to be pulled because apparently kids might see it. Oh, I think it's a brilliant ad. It is. And also if a child understands it, mama, papa, what are you not hiding from that child? I mean, I'm sorry, because I know that will go over my kids' heads. In fact, apparently, the Love Honey promo was displayed at Clapham Junction in southwest London in February. It featured an image of a gag ball and a large text stating, Silence is Golden, Harry, oh. and directed people to buy other similar products on wow. its website. Oh. Wow. So, yeah. If I was Harry, though, I'd clap back with my own selection. I don't know, but the collection is complete. It's fine. But she's not Harry. She uses feet. Ah. It works. Ah. Ah. <laughs> He's on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. Call me Sese. <laughs> Call me Sese, but I'm on a roll. And I fit because it's a very big roll. <laughs> wow. Now you're a hot dog. You're on a roll. Now, there's a big story um, that um, came out earlier on. Um, Finance Minister Ino Godongwana has withdrawn for now the gazette that exempts ESCOM from disclosing irregular and fruitless expenditure. They wanted to be allowed to keep quiet, yeah. including where people are stealing. They wanted to be allowed to just kind of shh about Yeah, it. this one is not your business. Look there. But why would you want to blatantly allow people who've been eating to eat without having to be held responsible? I, I don't understand. No, then great pull-out game to him. Eh? That's good pull-out game then. But he says for now. For now? Yes. Or oh, until he's... Because... He, until he goes, hey, it's enough, it's enough. Because the Auditor <laughs> General, I know, had a problem with it. Yeah. And now she's like, she's happy they've done this for now. For now. So that we can discuss it. Because you can't say to people, here's a blank check. Yes. Go shopping. Go that's shopping. Because that's what yeah. it is. Unless they were going, no, don't worry about the petty cash. We're telling you the things you sent us for here. Here's the receipt. That other stuff is petty cash. Don't worry. But a couple of billion, there's nothing petty about that, eh? Yeah, but this is South Africa. Yo. Like, it must be Tuesday. Can I, tell you, can I tell you a personal story? Yeah. About things you can't make up. So, a industry dude I know, he worked behind the scenes. Right. So, he's not a celebrity. He passed away um, a couple of weeks ago. And he lived with his pregnant girlfriend. Right. And so, he'd been sick. He had headaches and whatever else for the longest time. And he literally refused to go to the doctor. Uh, the day he went to the doctor was because he was passing in and out. Oh. And he, he, he had a lump on his forehead. Oh my God. It turns out he had a tumor that he just left. Ah. And that's how he, he, he passed away. And obviously then the family arrive at the flat. The two, I guess, start the processes of, we're going to bury him. Uh -huh. um, girlfriend is pregnant. Like, I think she's due in a month or two. Do you know that, I think the day after the funeral, the family took everything from that flat and left her without a, a thing. They even took the matras she was sitting on. Are they Shannon? They, right? oh man. Stop no, I'm only asking, that. no, it's not even that. Yeah. I was told it's a cultural thing. This, yeah. The same thing happened to my mother. That's why I'm asking. My mother was married to a Donga man. Yes. Well, they were not married. They were cohabiting. Sure. And the day after he was buried and when we got back home to Mafikeng, Nothing was there. The family came and collected everything and they said it's a cultural thing they took if she, that's what i'm asking they took the bed they used to sleep the matras she was mourning on yes was taken yeah. my mom my my younger sister who's my half sister was literally like two years old yeah. and these people didn't even go how are you gonna feed this child they literally went we want all of his cars all the furniture he bought all of the money gone took his house even like but, it's insane. but why do we treat grieving black women like that? Because I don't think it happens in any other culture, or does it? I don't know. Like I said, 
the explanation we got for this one was that it's cultural. But also, as, as young black women, we also need to educate ourselves because a lot of times we are covered in things we didn't know about. Like, oh, for yes, example, yes. she can go and claim his provisional tax. Sure. Um, she can also, if she can prove she was financially dependent on him mm -hmm. and can prove that this child is his, sure. she can also go and claim her rights to his inheritance. And the matras. Don't be lazy. She at least bring the matras. matras. Also, keep on loading. I mean, exactly. It has my which patch uh, on it? Where you take I mean, things uh? happened there. I dog. Uh, some people are just sick. But also, for me, even if it was my culture, you know, I feel like the things we pick and choose that sure. in terms of... It's a buffet. Yeah, it's a buffet. When it suits you, when, it's, exactly, it's our culture. It's exactly. our culture. And I, I, it's tragic. Because, you know, the people at the forefront of this are other women. Mm. I don't know why. But it was, in fact, it was, it, in fact, the, the mother. You see. Yes. And that thing of, yeah, you killed my son. I'm like, wow, really? And what do I benefit from killing your son? Absolutely. Pregnant We're and alone. Carrying. It's sad. In fact, speaking of sad, um, I also wanted to actually touch on a lot of the things you were sent to the BCCSA for. I firmly believe it was a white male saying exactly the same thing. It would have probably been, oh, okay, and now for the weather. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Because <laughs> sometimes, uh, uh, you know, in other instances, I remember a producer saying to me, you never should have even heard about these these other cases, but you clearly had a producer who didn't have your back or a station manager who didn't have your back because sure. these were actually a non-issue and never should have come been brought and, to and, my And in fact, it was a waste of BCCSA time. Yep. One of them, actually, one of the cases uh, was apparently very funny in court yeah. um, because it actually went that far. It went to court. It went it went to court. And um, a dude who was an ex-station uh, programs manager yes. attended. And he calls me. He's like, listen, even the judge was laughing. That's wow. how hectic this thing was in that you made a joke. When they listened, they were all laughing about it. Exactly. And the context made sense. And exactly. that's why you won the case. Exactly. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad I made their day. <laughs> <laughs> but but can we fix that though? Because no. I, I I I I always argue that on the hierarchy of visible to invisible, mm -hmm. right at the bottom is the black girl, mm -hmm. followed by the black woman. Uh -huh. It's never going to be fixed, my friend, and I'm going to tell you why. Tell me. Particularly in this country, we're a country of apologists. Sure. And so, um, the minute you call white people out you are aggressive you are taking us back you are um you 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 what do you are divisive sure uh you so you're not allowed to identify problematic behavior um it's like how now even with when we talk about gbv and women and how we report all it takes is one chick with one fake accusation yes. for all the valid ones to now be brought into question yes. so in, in fact i i, I can relate I, yeah, I, I, I can totally relate. So I, I don't know. I, we're never gonna fix it. All we, what we can do is fight back and and discourage that kind of thing more and more. Mm -hmm. It's like I was saying to you, I go, the person who goes and complains is not complaining for their offense. They're offended on behalf of someone else. Mm -hmm. Or there's another one who sent me because I praised um, a video. There's a music video, Yachakwesta, where he burns the old South African flag, oh, yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. And I was like, that's how we do it, man. Sure. You know, you can't be flying. Because I'd been to festivals when mm -hmm. I was working at that place where they would be flying the old South African flag mm -hmm. and no one took issue with that. Sure. This white dude writes to ABCCSA and said, I was inciting violence. I'm like, how am I inciting violence on a flag that doesn't exist or have relevance anymore in this and country right now? a flag that is, for a lot of people, a trigger yeah because that flag is associated yeah. with violence of that period and then i'm i'm not, me i'm inciting violence no my brother you are inciting violence by flying that thing in the first place you know what i mean we are a country that is pussyfooting around each other for so long and the day's gonna come when we're all tired of pussyfooting and that's gonna end badly we're mm. gonna implode mm. because we're refusing to have the conversations you know what i mean um and i just i appreciate that even these young these new tippy toes and the uh, gen z's they are starting to have that conversation mm. you know they're challenging so many things they call the, the, the 2000s almost fear nothing yeah yes, the, the fear for ah uh, the day i saw them calling them tatole nelly m Yes, yes, We've yes, lost yes. them. Now they are uh, forced onto themselves. And I'm excited to watch it happen. I see it with my own children. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're quite young. Sure. And you will think I politicized them. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I felt like they're going to go, they're going to grow up too quickly if sure. I 
um, make them aware of mm -hmm. who they are racially and all didn't take me. Yes. I found my daughter frustrated on YouTube. I'm like, what are we watching? She's like, I'm trying to find brown girls, mom. Oh, wow. Because she, she loves gaming and yes. she loves um, um, animation. And she was just like, I'm, I'm looking for the black girls who do this. Yes. You know? And that wasn't me. They weren't taught that by me. Mm. Um, I've seen it with my son as well. Uh, in America, he's pushing keeping his South African accent. Oh, yes. He is pushing knowing his history. When there's elections, he goes, Mommy, these are the top five, okay? So I'm not going to tell you how to vote. But let me tell you about this guy, this guy, and this guy. And I'm like... That is incredible. When are you When are you reading up on these things? Yes, and, yes. But those are the children I have. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited that those are the kids who are interested in their history. Mm -hmm. Because they are... My, I call my house the United Colors of Benetton. Yes. We are friends with people from all walks of life on the continent and around the world, every race from Asian to white to mm. all kinds of black, right? Mm. And yet my children will tell you they've read The Long Walk to man, uh, to, to Freedom. They will tell you... The abridged one for kids or the whole thing? The, the abridged one for kids, okay. but my eldest has read the the adult one as well. It's a very long book. This okay. is a child who's read the Alex Ferguson book. Jeez. She read it in like a week. So I feel like we are going to have a different angle on this that mm. no one can push back as you're pulling out the race card. Mm. Because I remember Bonsu, that's my firstborn one, saying to me, Mom, I don't get it because I hang out with the twins, it's these two white twins. Mm. They were doing better at Zulu, he was doing better at English. So if it was a funny white, relationship. If it's white twins, it would be true. But in a, 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 you know what I mean. Yes, I was just stating okay. for illustration. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, I, 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 know, I know, I love them. Like, they're my people and they are people and we come. So I need to understand how the black and white thing worked oh, and I was yes. like yeah I need to explain this thing to my son mm. and funny enough it, that was around the time I also explained the bicycle thing. I used the bicycle analogy for the first time was actually with my son uh, about the land before issue. it hit about the land issue yeah yes, when we yes. got feathered down and I was like you know right now I don't feel like we're divided according to race so much I think right now it's a it's a class thing it's a money thing mm. the blacks with the money tend to actually not care what's happening anymore they don't know if it's a black and white thing it's in about fact, am I still eating in, in fact you can't make this up I mean I've got black friends that started going to the four ways market yeah right and there was a black friend of mine who said, there's a lot of blacks now. I don't go there anymore. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Do you think a day will come when we acknowledge how good apartheid was? Yeah. You know, it will, was, will a day come when we all acknowledge how effective it was? Apartheid was brilliant because yo. it is still at work yo. and it will take more than one generation yo. to fix it. No, they were good because at what they Because it's up here. Yes. It's up here. Can you imagine if we filled our parliament, our government with that level of intelligence yes. of doctors, psychologists, scientists, thinkers who can shape and come up with systems thinking. that are yes. effective. Make a system that will outlast us. Yes. Because you're right. If you send your child to a school and it's all black or all the teachers are black, there are no white teachers, you're going to go, ah, yeah, this one doesn't have white people. I don't Absolutely. want it. And sometimes we don't even do it consciously. We mm. just go, mm, I went to this restaurant. There were no white people. I think let's try the other one. If I, I'll give you an example. I mean, I, from nursery school, yeah. I went to nursery school with white kids, Indian kids. Right. It was United Nations yeah. at nursery mm. in the 70s. Yeah. Primary school. I was in primary school with kids from countries around the world. High school. But moving from YFM to 5FM, still in the back of my mind, because the system is so effective, mm. there were days I'd ask myself, am I going to fit in? Mm. I grew up with kids like the men who were working there yeah. and the women that are working there. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I still have this imposter thing going. Mm that am I sure I want to move here? You know, it's, it's, it's perceived as a white radio station, but sorry, my mom is watching and what's the <laughs> to say? I can't see you. <laughs> anyway, and, 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 and for me, it was very deep yeah. for myself yeah. that why am I scared that I'm going into a perceived as white environment when I grew up with them? Yeah. I know that they're not better than me because of their skin color. If you're better than me, you're better than me because you kick ass. Not because right. your skin color makes you automatically superior. But I fresh you think about it. The private schools we send our kids to, yeah. all the teachers are white. The ground staff is black. You know we complain about that at one of the schools. Like we, we, we complain about that. You're sending a message. In, 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 in fact, I remember uh, 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 the wife was often seen as a rabble rouser. Yeah. Because she would write to the principal yeah. that why is it that the, the only black staff members are the ground staff mm. and the cleaners? Mm. What are you saying to our kids? Exactly. And she'd raise it all the time. Mm. So every time our car would arrive, I'm sure the headmistress 
would open the <laughs> curtain. Here they come. It's like the sequence is here. And I'm not here. And it's a problem. It is. And, 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 and the fact that schools are allowed to even have that, yeah. it, it's not right. Mm. Mm. I mean, companies are told you need to be triple BEE, you need to be this, you need to be that. But schools are allowed to have an all white teacher compliment. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And it's not like we don't have the teachers who are capable. I mean, I was speaking to a white friend who was telling me how they have this excellent new maths teacher, black yes. man. Yeah. And she was like, but now these guys have started a WhatsApp group on the side. And they're like, they're not comfortable with you this guy as the teacher. And she was saying her daughter has been doing so well. Like her daughter literally in one term, yes. had this guy had turned her around. Yes. yes, You know, he is just so in tune with the kids. And she was saying, I, I don't understand what these guys are trying to do because this guy knows exactly what he's doing. And she was like, honestly, I'm going to tell you now it's because he's a black dude and we've never had a black dude in the school. Because exactly. I think this was her third or second child mm. going through the school. And yes. she was like, we've never have this before. Ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And schools are allowed to get away with and, it. And then parents can go through arms because they're like, ah, yeah, yeah, what is this? Our child cannot know that a black dude can... But how is it allowed? Uh, but how is it allowed, though, that... It's the country, isn't it? We live in a country where uh, deals were made that we we're not clearly are not talking about. Yeah, we're not privy to it, yeah. but I'm telling you now, freedom came at a bigger price than just the lives lost. I feel like there's an agreement that goes beyond the violence of the time mm -hmm. and whatever was signed mm -hmm. in front of all of us in that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. When you, And you look at it, when you look at our parents when they retire, when they retire with their white counterparts, mm -hmm. who's still living better, you know? Mm -hmm. You look at... Um, um, the quality of life of a poor black and a poor white. Yeah. We're, we're not quite on the same level. And so I don't want to have these conversations going to go, ah, she's still the one of this white woman. Yeah, and she's wearing red. We know where she belongs. But I just feel like as, as South Africans, the minute we start having these kind of honest conversations with each other, the further forward we're going to move. Mm. Because right now we're moving around in a circle. We're like a goat that was tied in a circle with a rope around its neck. They've removed the, ne the rope, but we're still walking around the same damn circumference because we are dodging an issue. And I don't know what the hell we're so afraid of. Mm. Rather go through it, not around it, so we can freaking do something great for our kids in the future. I want our kids to be the Ruberts the Ruberts and the what of the world. I want mm. our kids to build wealth, but the wealth needs to start here. Sure. Our kids cannot still be falling. And that's why I think our kids fall into African-American culture so much and they reach for things outside of themselves. Because there's, no, because there's, because because there's no leadership here. Yeah, we're not grounded in anything solid because yes. we haven't committed to any sure. truth. Those guys have committed to their truth. Mm. And then we start and, committing and, and, and to And they market lightly. it to us so much. Yes. We jump into it. We jump into it. But do you blame us? What are we all sold on and agreed on mm. as a people right now? And that our kids can actually dig into and say this is who I am I want whereas old South Africa mustered the concept of nationalism and, and it's a national identity and it's still there and it's still there that's mm. why them we can try and conquer but it will never be through division yeah yeah. Us, mm. still divided, mm. still conquered. We may claim we have the country. They created a lager. We want to drink one. <laughs> we need to wake up. We live in a fool's paradise. But it's not all doom and gloom, guys. At least we have beer. Says the girl going to America after this. Yeah, but have you seen how much I've lived in America and how much I've been here? Which is also a bugbear in, in mm. terms of, you know, the, the, the relationship and being at home. It's like... But that's why the good Lord uh, created uh, phone and video sex, though. Oh, yeah. And that's also why we're rich. Exactly. You must be rich so you can afford things like that. Like, Yasin, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to sleep in South Africa for the next three months. I'll see you. I'll see you when I come It's not a stupid fight. Exactly. <laughs> you, you forgot the salmon. Yeah. I said salmon. You brought tilapia. I'm going to South Africa. I can't, I can't, I can't look at you right now. I can't. I'm can't. I can't. I'm, I'm going home for two, three weeks, three months, and I'll be back. But also, I have to come home. My gang is here, you know. Mm. I, I work with the underground gang, and some of them have been like, yeah, we've got passports, let's go. Others, the are, others are like, the others, others are like, others are still forget swimming. swimming. They're like, ah, see in Dao, ah, see, see, leave us alone. But what is, it, what is it with us that we're not swimming? When you come out, like, <laughs> Speak for yourself. Some of us are wild for some of us swim and we know how to come out like Baywatch. Nahabe. Naki bala give us a direct stroke. When now bala over and you waddle, you waddle. Me, me, I know strokes, my friend. I know strokes. You know strokes somewhere else. I know strokes in the ocean. You know what I mean? Me, I don't play. Me, I'm here. 
<laughs> I remember being hungover and yeah. going swimming in the ocean. <laughs> and my friends were like, you have never been more Caucasian. Like your Caucasity is at its peak right now. Because I was like, I need to work this hangover out. Absolutely. Then I came out feeling a light. It works. Yeah. It works. But then I was like, yeah, it's true. My mother's school fees waked. You know me and you could talk for like a day and a half, right? Oh, she's it. Unfortunately, I need to let you go. Ah, uh, don't let me go. I must. I've known you for a very long time. You know that. Like, it's been long, long. I know. Like, I was in high school, though. I know. That's insane, Fresh. And look at us. We're still here. Friend. Absolutely. Rade, never say that. You know what the weirdest thing is? You know how you talk about how you have the resilience of a cockroach? Mm -hmm. Often when people ask me what animal would I be but an animal, I tell them the exact same thing. True story. Oath. Really? I tell them I'd be a cockroach because I will survive anything, anything. and everything and I can thrive in any yeah. environment. Amen. Transplant me to any country mm -hmm. and I'll make it work. You know what? Any country. But do you know why? Tell me why. We know who we are, babe. Exactly. And exactly. Never forget who the hell you are. No one can take that from Because half your battle is won in understanding who the hell you are. Amen. We want to drop the mic. Pow. And to me, my is about to leave the building and make your way back to the U.S. and try and conquer Atlanta because why you were quite loved. They're like, I'm in America. You get a New York they, 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 they don't have enough blacks. And then you get to Atlanta like, damn, son. Too many of us. Oh, I have to leave you with this though. We yes. are colonizing Atlanta. I've been to places where, you know, this whole issue with gentrification yes. owned by South Africans, bruh. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, no, listen. So it's not just the Nigerians. Uh, it's not just... Because, <laughs> because, no, no, because Nigerians have made a... Like, Proper footprint. Yes. Yeah. And, and and that's one thing I actually love and respect about Nigerians. Yeah. They never forget who they, they yeah. are. And they walk into a room mm. confident. Yeah. Doesn't matter where in the world yep. we are. If we can learn that from West Africans, not just Nigerians, we'd actually get so far. They scatter you. Yeah. And then they build. We just know scatterings of our work. <laughs> Huh? Fresh, can we just go? Like, we're never gonna fit. We'll talk offline. Bye, guys. Please go watch The Honeymoon. It's an incredible movie. Uh, she plays Knox. Knox is. Uh, my spirit animal. That's, that's not. Watch true. The Honeymoon. <laughs> Follow Tumi Moraki on all social media. And if you're watching this from the US, remember the name Tumi Moraki. You think Trevor Noah did things? <laughs> you just wait. She's still building. She's still building. <laughs> But once she's built, ah, yeah, yeah. the Statue of Liberty, the torch, she's going to put it down like this. <laughs> and some, ah, Dumi's here. Let me put the torch down. Dumi, I love you. I love you. Respect you, like nothing but love for you and the work you do. Thank you. And I'm glad you are starting all over again somewhere else because the world deserves you. Aww. And often we didn't appreciate you enough. And often we didn't come to your defense where we needed to come to your defense when you were under attack. And I'm glad you're rebuilding somewhere else. Maybe they'll appreciate you more than we did. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, Tumi Morake is leaving the building. This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. This is Wow, What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. Our guest is in the building. Some people want to become DJs. Some want to open up a restaurant. Some want to earn lots of money and maybe give some to charity. Maybe donate uh, shoes to school kids. Maybe come up with two incredible Afro tech events, Afro house events. The next guest has done all of that and a bit more and lost a car in the process. Please, let's give a wow welcome to Shimza. Yeah. Shimu. How are you, man? What's up, Shimi? No, I'm good. I'm far so are you. Yo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How are you man? I'm okay. Man. You know, you know, you know. Things have changed when DJs are now wearing uh, LV uh, tops just casually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I had lunch with I had dinner with Temba last night. He was like in LV from head to toe. I'm like, hey, my friends are making a lot of money. No, it's not even. It's not even a part. That's the thing. I, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever imagine when you started your journey as a teenager with horrible dreadlocks? His dreadlocks were horrible. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> my man, who made those dreadlocks? Uh, I made them myself. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> I'm sure you started with the sunlight. 
is it, like even in your wildest dreams, did you think it would become what it's become? I don't think I th- I thought that far. Yes. I thought about what is it that I can do right now yes. that makes sense to where I want to go. Mm. You know, and um, that's how I've sort of like been able to be patient with people even mm. who had certain keys to doors that I wanted oh, yes, to be yes. opened. You know, so I think the patience for me has, is what really kept me going mm. and understanding that like it's it's good for you to to wait for your turn, mm. you know, wait for your turn um, with the most uh, humble patience as, as possible. Mm. And things will always fall into place, you know. And if you kick ass and consistently so, yeah. something will happen. 100%. So when you get to a point in your life where you're at a certain stage, make sure that that stage um, presents you in the most um, amazing way so mm. that the people that are looking at the people at your level yeah. you sort of stand out you know? absolutely that's that's what I've always tried to do Ashley yes sir is that why where Shimza came from because you're like I don't want a girl's name no <laughs> <laughs> from my dad's name was Ashley <laughs> yeah I think um the Ashley name, I think, even in in high in primary school, yeah. I was not I was not sure, you know. Sure, sure. Um, so I have I have two names, which is Ashley Kulofelo. Sure. And then Shimi is like a nickname yes, that I got yes. from my from my grandfather, which means like Mshima. Yeah, like a Shimi. Shimi, you know. Yeah. Um, and then when I became a DJ, I was like, let me, cause Bukas is like Bambita Shimi. You know? Sure. And then as I became a DJ, I thought like, let me just give it a twist and give it a za at the end. Mm. And that's probably because my, my mentor's name was uh, Komza. Yes. So it's yes. like Shimza, Komza, it mm. sort of mm. made sense. You know? So yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that even now internationally, the name is like a thing now. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. What do you miss about Komza? I miss the, the type of challenging person that she was mm-hmm. you know a person that would tell you oh, sure. that one was not that was not what i told you yes you know and someone that was very competitive even amongst um his peers you know um i i liked that spirit about him and i think that's what really um helped me become who i am today mm-hmm. because um i come from a um, an era where you're playing on turntables but these guys expect you to be like the best at like the most basic um um turntables mm. you know mm. and you make mistakes because the turntables are not really meant for that like it belt drive that swiping um pitch you know? yes yes and they pushed you to make sure that you are the best at that so when when i when i graduated into playing on like sl 1200s it was a breeze for me you know i was i was comfortable you know people sometimes say to me you know, are you fine with our decks? Maybe they're not sure about their own setup. Yeah. And I always remind them that I started DJing off cassette. Yeah. So anything yeah. that is not cassette is yeah. good. Hundred <laughs> percent. And I think we are we are just spoiled now, you know. And I always say to people yeah. when this whole um um conversation about syncing when yes. when you're DJing, you know, and I'm like I, I think sometimes when I when and, there's I DJ, and it's like I want to concentrate on the creativity that I can sure. I, and not worry about the page and try to prove a point that I can mix. I've and, done that. And technology is there because it's your friend. Hundred percent. Use it. Yeah. 100%. And half the time, yeah. No one cares no one whether cares. the sync button is on because they can't see it. Yeah. No one cares. So I I I use my equipment to to my to my advantage. Mm. I make sure that when I do get new equipment, sure. I study it and I, and I can see what um, the buttons do on the new mixer, the the CDJs and stuff. In fact, when there's new technology, you're like a child in a toy store. Yeah, it's like it's, it's to see this man learn new technology and master the new technology yeah i think it's it's my it's my biggest trait you yeah. know and even with my strategy with my international um career is mm-hmm. that i want to come in differently sure. you know i think i've i've gone around and i've seen how djs play mm-hmm. around the world and i'm like there's something missing yes. that that the consumer overseas mm-hmm. is sort of like um 
There's no show. Yeah, there's no show. You know, we're not saying you must bounce your breasts like yeah. this, <laughs> but you know, if you're able to yeah. put on a show, put on a show. You know, so I I use the equipment to put on a show because, mm. like, you do something and people, it's it sounds good and it looks good because mm. people are there to watch you and to listen to the music. So, I think the offering is 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 quite unique and yeah, we uh, that's that's what I'm pushing. Mm. Yeah. Now we're here for wow, what a week because we generally typically want to look at. What a week in the life of Shimza looks like. So yeah. when, not, when you're not touring, yeah. what does your week look like? I mean, this week was was quite crazy. Yeah. You know, I I landed on Monday. Mm. From where? Um, I had a I had a European tour. Uh, I, I did I did Paris on Friday, and then I did Amsterdam on Saturday, and then I flew Sunday to land on Monday. Mm. And when I landed around 4 p.m., I had to go straight from the airport to. Um, a studio where I was shooting a pilot for mm. a show that I was presenting this week to channel, you mm. know. Um, and then on Tuesday, I sort of like crashed and I, I stayed in bed the whole day, but obviously on the phone, um, speaking to people. Um, today we had the pitch mm. um, with channel. How, how did the pitch go? It, it went very well, mm. you know. I, I just hope we get... Without giving away too much, what show are you pitching to what channel? Um, I want to play in the music, t- like in the music TV space. Okay. Yeah. So I want to talk about events. I want to talk about entertainment. Mm. I want to be like a, a new age live amp. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. I wanna, I wanna do groundbreaking things mm-hmm. that I think also showcase the culture of what's really happening on the ground. Mm. And 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 that's what we've sort of like done with like the sh- like you are, which is on Channel O right now, yeah. where we are showcasing music that's not really like popular in the streets. It's not, it's not mainstream, but it's, it's, popping, mainstream. But it's popping. Yeah. The, the streets still love it, though. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I created a platform that sort of also gives a platform to producers and DJs mm. who are dominating in that space, but not that are not in the mainstream. Sure. You know? So using my platforms to sort of showcase the music and the DJs who are in that space. And that's how um, them, and you are sort of positioned. You mm. know? And with this, I want to go for like young, fresh talent that mm. can pro- like can um, um, present, you know, mm. and also people who are vibe, you mentioned. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you wake up in the morning, like, do you pray? Do you give thanks? What's a typical morning? Well, after good morning, <laughs> like, what, what happens after that? Before <laughs> baby, <laughs> what am I doing today? Oh, what, baby, is there family meeting today? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't have a routine. You yeah. know, I wish, I wish I was like a heavy prayer sure. and 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 stuff, but I think. I wake up and I think, okay, cool. What's next? What needs to be done? Yeah, what needs to be done? And then, and then I pray about it. You know, like, mm. um, like short prayers. Like, God, please, um, with my presentation today, can that please go well? Mm. And um, hopefully, we get the work because mm. I feel like I have a team of young guys that are really amped to work and and are really passionate about stuff. And mm. when we do get opportunities like these. Um, which come from people seeing the work that we do and not because of the connections sure, or what, what sure. you know. Um, because you're connected. Yeah. You're political. You're connected, political, you're political. What, what. I, you know, and I'm like... Um, you know, pe- people don't understand how hard you have worked to build your name. Yeah. If anything, politicians are lucky to know you yeah. Given how hard you've worked to build your brand. I met you when you were 15, 16 years old. 15, yeah. I mean, he, he won a DJ contest at a conference, a DJ conference we were doing. He was 15, 16. He buried all the other DJs, buried them. Yeah. So, so you've been building, you've been on this path. So how does it feel when people now treat you like you've been parachuted into success? And now I had this conversation. Does it piss you off or does it upset you? You know, I had this conversation um, with my with the people around me this yeah. week, and I was like, you know, sometimes it it sort of hurts me, sure. you know, for for a person that understands how much work they put in and how much sacrifice um, that they they like that I have to go through to mm. make sure that things um, go according to plan. You know, I mean. 
like you're saying, I was not parachuted into this thing. Mm. I've literally built everything that I've had from scratch. From scratch, you know, like everything that I have is yeah. because of yeah. the small investments that I made. Mm. Like to save my money to go to the conference and to pay for the for the for the tickets for the whole week. Mm. You know, that was an investment from my own money from Goske. By a fifteen year old child. Yeah. You know, and and I got there. I knew the value that I was going to get from that, and which is what I've been using mm. um, in my whole career. And and it's not just learnings about the music and the production that you learned there, but it's also about the 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 humanity of being able to pass on the baton to yes, other people yes. and help. Because I understand that if someone didn't think about that conference. I would not have had the opportunity to win my first set of turntables yes. at that at that, you yes. know. So I have a I have a responsibility to do that for other people, you know, and mm -hmm. that's why I create as much as I can mm -hmm. for the people around me, you know, and it's not just the office that I work with, it's not the the salaries that I pay every month, but it's also about people that I don't even know, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. someone will say, This guy is dope. Sure. And I'm like Okay, yeah, I'll shop. let's put him on on UR. Let's put him on Gunye, you know, just to also help where I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why were you having that conversation with your team? I was having that conversation because every time, like, um, someone loses an argument with me, mm -hmm. they're like, "Yeah, when well, it's because you're connected, you're connected," mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, those connections, if you want to call them connections, mm -hmm. are not because there's something sinister that's happening. Mm. If you are doing something dope and you get to meet someone through a DJ Fresh, mm. that's also a connection. But it's not a connection, yeah, yeah, or fresh kim fila zaga or I'm connecting them to it. Yes. That person is there in that position to commission mm. um the uh, a production company to sure. do certain work. Mm. So if I'm introduced to that person and that person tells me about the work that they have to do in the department or in their in the in the um workspace, mm. then how is that a problem? You know, when you get a brief directly to say mm. when someone pinpoints you and says, I I want you guys to give that company a brief sure. for a show that you are doing because yeah. they've seen what you can do. You've, you've earned it. You've earned it, mm -hmm. you know. And when when now someone wants to reduce all your hard work to just connection. To who you know or who you're dating. Doesn't make sense. Mm. Yeah. It, and it, you know, funny enough, yeah. like I'm like, you know, I'm 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 dating the most honest person on earth. Mm. You know? Like I've never had a conversation about tenders or like um, if, baby um, five, or something. I'm five girl. You know, you know. <laughs> I've, I've never had those conversations with her yeah. because get this panel. I don't need. I don't need any of any connection. Mm -hmm. I, like more than that, people actually come to me because I've got stuff that they see value that they can work mm -hmm. with. You know. Mm -hmm. um, like even with the restaurant, you know, the the one thing that sort of got the media was that yeah, I got a tender koshobo for like some cook off that they did, and yeah. I'm like, if the department comes to me and and says not even to me to the to the establishment, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh wow, we like this, it's in the township, we wanna come do something here, you know, so we must now ask pass a special or little guy the one man little guy chale they what not, it's like. And, what, why, and why ask? Why ask? Yeah, you know? like you you need a quote. Yeah. Here's a quote. Mm. This is what the quote is about. Um, Orelonali. What else do you need? We need this. We need that. Mm. Here's what you need. Sure. You know. And when they say, okay, cool, we are coming to your establishment, then it's that. That's it. You know. Or mal wetang down the road um, to. Uh, I, it's none, of your, it's, not, it's none of your business. It's none of my business. I'm mm. running my own stuff. And if people see value in what I'm doing and they want to add value or use what I'm doing, then mm. they must do that, mm. you know? And it's 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 quite funny that when people look at you and they and they see that side reacts because what 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 about the people that are working at my establishment? Mm. What about the kids that I fed through the establishment that I've I've I've, I've, I've created in the township, mm. you know, um, and yeah, 
challenge the river rickety, you know, like you can be apologetic. Ah, I swear. In fact, you can't be apologetic for kicking ass. You must be apologetic for getting a gig, but you don't kick ass. <laughs> then you must apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, so, <laughs> so, you know. In fact, you ended up in court with Nota, which was which was un- unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been paid your money? Um to so call a fresh, you know, and and it's funny because you you see the perception that people um, perceive online, and mm. you're like, actually, these things are not like you are not what you are saying you are. Yes, online, yes, yes. You know? And it's unfortunate because that type of behavior encourages other people to behave that way, mm. and then when the repercussions for that um, hit you, it's mm. like we won. Everyone that was praising you for the shit that you were saying mm. is not there anymore, mm. you know? Mm. And we're dealing with facts here, you know? In Ali, we're talking about Not only this is a spaceship, it's not a spaceship, we're mm. born into it, you know? Mm. And you, we, we deal with facts when it comes to such things. Mm. When you're saying, I'm wearing green pants mm. and I'm wearing blue pants, it's my duty to correct you if sure. I'm seeing that what you're trying to perpetuate mm. might hurt me, sure. you know. So me taking him to court was was just saying, what you're saying is wrong, my mm. brother, mm. you know, and you you have to pay for sure. the damage of reputation that you, you're causing towards. Isn't it funny, though, how people are always quick to say, yeah, but just forgive him or just let it slide. At whose expense? But that's what, that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, at whose expense? Because... That that notion of of you are corrupt, you are an mm. abuser, sure. stays with you. Exactly. You know? Because some people see things from like headlines mm. and they just take it for that. Mm. You know, and they're like, oh van. Sure. You know, and you sort of realize that people want to downplay your success because of their own failures. Mm. You know, they don't wanna take it for actually this guy was bad. Sure. You know? They always want to they always want to say, yeah, it's because, mm. you know, mm. yeah, it's because Otola Chenle, they're from Kai Kai. Yeah, it's because one, two, one, two. And, and, and often it's people who haven't watched the journey, no. who haven't watched you struggling, yeah. who haven't watched you doing little shows at Joe's Buchari in, in Alex because you're building. They don't see the losses that I've made over the years trying yes. to build my one-man show in sure. Chibisa, mm. you know, and they just see the end product and they think, those things just parachuted, like you said earlier, you know. Um, and it's a it's a disease that we sort of need to fight, sure. you know. And like now, I'm happy that we can now t- take people to court to mm-hmm. say, hey, this is you are not going to tell people how I am sure. through your narrative. Mm-hmm. I need to protect the type of person that. In, f- I am. in, in fact, it's funny you say that. Um, someone tweeted me the other day saying, you know, if you and Temba are not uh, guilty and the NPA has thrown out your case twice, why don't you let it go? Imagine. And in my mind, I'm like, someone I don't know, someone I've never met in my life, makes accusations that cost each one of us a minimum of 10 million rand in business. And was let it go. Imagine. One year. Like, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> you know, even if people know that you are not type of that type of a person, Exactly. You know, and that's that's the and, the, un- and unfortunately, it's only in court that you can clear your name. And then they say, no, you bought the judge. You can never win. <laughs> but the very same people winning in court will say, ah, no, the justice system yeah. works. A Mandela. Uh, yeah. But yeah. when it works in your favor based on facts. When it works against the exactly. narrative that they want to yeah, push, exactly. the problem, you know? So no, we're not letting it to go. Well, it's, it's not going to happen. You can yeah. let it go a little mouth there. <laughs> But we are not letting it go. <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Tell us about Kunye. What on earth is Kunye? Kunye is a is a is a Afro tech movement, Afro house, Afro tech movement that, yeah. that started um, during lockdown. Um, we started it off with like twenty of my friends, yeah. you know, and we we're like, I I remember actually I was sitting down with Dark and I don't remember who else was there. Mm. I think stuff, and we were watching Balcony Mix. Sure. You know. And then, uh, major league DJs. Yeah, major league DJs. Uh, and then like someone was busy saying, Ah, look these ones, but should I want to no, this thing, the sound is bad, right, mm. right? And I was like, you know, guys, we are sitting here 
you are busy criticizing this thing. But they're doing something. They are doing something. Yes. Ronaldo do it on this couch during lockdown <laughs> and we think uh, we must sit here and be spectators of other people who are doing stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's how the show started. I was like, actually, next week, we are going to book cameras and we are going to start this thing. Yes. You know, um, not knowing that we were, we we're building something so big that mm. is now like sort of like a, a culture shifter and, and something that sort of introducing a lot of um, producers and artists mm. and putting them on mainstream events, you know. And now we have a, a show in Marrakesh in Morocco. Shut up. We have a Cunha in Albania coming through, Yo. you know, um, and that's where we want to go. Mm -hmm. We want to take the South African experience and give it to the world. Yeah, package it and sell it. Yeah. Because one of the unfortunate things about our dance culture is we're not exporting it. Yeah. Uh, we're exporting a lot of the world music, yeah. a lot of the grrr. Yes, you know, yes. That, that we've been exporting and winning Grammys for for the last 30 years. Yeah. But our dance culture, which is rich, and, and that's why I'm loving what Ama Piano are doing. Yeah. That, that they're literally saying, we're going to go. Yeah. We're all going. Yeah. So why can't it happen with, uh, with Afro Tech and Afro House? 100%. And you know, the, the, the one thing that we have as a, as a sort of like a back foot yes. with our sound is that we do have the support in mm. South Africa, but mm. it's not as as huge yeah. as as what the Mapiano movement is 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 all about, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people who are now traveling abroad, who are sure. gigging abroad, you know, and I feel like we shouldn't all go out. Mm -hmm. Some needs to need to stay in South Africa and still build this thing because mm -hmm. this we, we need to sell the success of what this thing is back at home sure. before like it can be a success anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um Bits and beat the uh, bits and pieces of yeah. of it. Um, we just trying to move, mm, you know. Mm, mm, yeah. When you guys did lockdown house party, initially it was what yourself, PH, and um, 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 Black Motion. Black Motion. What happened there? Because I know there was talks of beef. Uh, no, actually, the, the stole our idea. Nah, what what happened? Nah, you know, like. When lockdown house party started, yeah. I was like, we are going into quarantine and I need to come up with something that's going to keep people. I saw an opportunity, sure. you know, and then I went to the guys and I was like, guys, actually, I have an idea mm. because we are locked up. People are at home. Um, I need to put together something that's going to entertain people. Mm. So I was like, who are the immediate people that I should call? I was like. Gabza Pori, mm. they need to be on this thing sure. because they are like the pioneers of mm. piano. Black Motion, Kick Ass. Mm. Um, I'm going to be on Dark is My Boy. Mm. PH, the best hip hop DJ sure. in the country, you know. Um, and then Zinte mm. as well, you know. And I was like, I called everyone. Like, guys, this is what I want to do. Um, it's on Saturday. Let's do it. Sure. And everyone, because they they available, they were like, "Sharp." Yeah, we had nowhere to go. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll come through, you know. And then and then uh, murder yeah. offered his studio. Mm. He was like, "Actually, we can shoot it here at my studio." Sure. And I was like, "Perfect," mm. you know. So when that thing went viral, mm. I think everyone that was involved sort of felt like. Because we were we were called to be on this first thing that went viral, mm. we all have to be. We all have equity. Yeah, we have equity in this yeah. thing, yeah. you know. And it's like sharp, granted, mm. but I'm I'm the brain. It's my baby. It's my it's my intellectual mm. property. Mm. I thought about this thing mm. and I put everything together, mm. you know. Um, so when when channel came through to say. We want this thing to go on to, to TV, you know. I was like, "Sharp, um, do I do I go alone, or do I do I choose who I'm taking with?" Mm -hmm. You know, and because PH was in the right place at the right time with Cebu, mm -hmm. and we were having those conversations, Cebu came with PH and. The conversation was sort of like around us because Sibu is a is a fast thinker and yes, like yes. He, she's, he, she's a powerhouse, hundred percent powerhouse, yeah. you know. And I was like, okay, guys, Rchuna, sure, journalism is 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 interested. Mm. Was like sharp. Sure. I was like, how much do we need to 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 shoot this thing? 
I made phone calls. I got us a studio to come shoot. The next, like literally, I was on the phone calling mm -hmm. everyone that I know to make this thing happen. Sure. And then it happened, and um, I think some people felt like Rashid Le left out. Yes. You no, know, and they thought maybe we're making so much money from the show. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't like that. You mm -hmm. know? But the type of person that I am, I try and reach out as much as I can to sort of. Um, fix things sure. and and say oh, it's 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 not like that mm -hmm. this is what happened and whatnot you know so i think from from that some people felt like yeah they were hard done because they were on the first one mm. um when i tried to book some of the guys who started this thing with me um for the actual show which had a bit of budget mm. it was not a lot it mm. was like literally nothing um, I got the craziest quotes, you know, which is mm -hmm. one. Yeah, we're gonna make our money back. Yes, yeah, hundred and two thousand. I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, and but I kept moving, you know, yeah. I kept moving yeah. because I had a, I had a, I had faith in what sure. I had thought about from mm -hmm. from where it go, you know, and uh, I think I'm I'm cool with everyone else. I, I was gonna say, how are relations now then? So yeah, have you squashed everything? Yeah, is it sorted? It's, it's cool. It's yeah, cool, it's cool. You know. Um, I'm not a person or a mm. even though people see me on Twitter responding, ah, but it's like, I, bro, I'm... In too. fact, often you will sometimes post something on social media and immediately people will say, yeah, he's talking about black coffee, he's talking about nut. Nah, 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 nah. You know? How's your relationship with nut? Um, it's, it's cool. It's mm. cool. You know, you know, as, sure. as much as I would really love it to be better. Mm. Um, What's missing? <laughs> What's missing is what? What can I help with? <laughs> what can we had this conversation? What can myself and Oskido help with? Because we've myself and Oskido are, 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 are peace brokers. Yeah, I think you've tried. You've tried enough. Mm. You know, you've tried, and it, it, and you all know that it's always um, from my end asking for the mediation and trying to to sort stuff out. Because mm. you know, when I think about it, I'm like. Like what went wrong? In, in fact, I was going to say, do you know at what stage you realize that there isn't a relationship here anymore? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, it happens in friendships <laughs> and even in marriages where you realize that no, man, I'm in this marriage alone now. Yeah, yeah, you know, you you start seeing the behavior. Mm. You know, you start seeing that behavior, and maybe, like sometimes, if I was like 20, 21, 22, mm. you know, and it's sort of like you don't know what it is that's wrong that you did. Mm. But sometimes I feel like, as Khrut Maniak, if I do something or I mess up... Call me out. Call me out, mm. you know. And if maybe I do it again, Oskam mm. fell because... Because... You know, I'm not to say, you know. And that's why I've always tried to, like... Like, come on, man. Like, mm. uh, let's let's try and move past that thing and and build a new relationship if it's possible. Mm. Um, and then at some point, I I, I made peace with it you sure. know, to say, Ish, it's not gonna happen. Ah, it's it's not gonna happen, and and it's uh, it's unfortunate. It hurts me. It I, hurts me every now and then. If I was gonna say, are you still open to hundred percent? Hundred percent. You know, and I, and sometimes I feel like um, there's so much that we can do mm. but i think um like the the levels are like this mm. you know and mm. it's like why must i why must i to go back and try and speak to this person that mm. hurt me if mm. i did hurt him but mm. when a young person comes back and says to you man, if if i did mess up mm. please man like i'm i'm really sorry mm. you no know, mm. but how can we fix this thing and you're still on some I whatever you know, um, but I think we we I'm cool, man. Like you know, I'm in a I'm in a good space. You know, I'm I'm cool. Yeah. You know, I've made peace with everything and sure. get sharp. Like things are are moving mm. the way they should be. And I think maybe this is my path. Mm. You know, um, as much as I understand how much influence and 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 help that I can get from. Having that cosign from mm. the biggest artist that comes from where I come from, mm. South Africa, it it sort of hurts when, you know, when you look like the black sheep. Mm. You know, it's like when people ask you, "You from South Africa, right?" I'm like, mm. "Yeah," and then like, "Are you? Are you black? Do you know Black Coffee?" Mm. And I'm mm. like, "Yeah, he's he's my he's my he's my older brother, if mm. I can put it that way." Mm. You know, but 
wabona le bona ba iputisa or man no man. There's a disconnect. Yes, yeah. you know, you 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 are one of the best DJs that we see in the world and we we sort of see what he has done in the industry mm-hmm. and some feel like actually if he were to co-sign you um you would things would change things would change for you mm. you know mm. so those are the type of conversations that take me back to that to say Ish, they hurt yeah. you know they hurt when you know that Ish, i can get a bit sure. of help from mm. this but because our relationship is not cool uh, but you are charting your own path and you're doing it at a rapid speed yeah what do you think it is about brand shimza that the world is embracing you, that you're starting to sell out shows in other countries, yeah. one man. What are you doing right that others could learn from you? I think I'm very persistent. Mm. You know, I'm very persistent and... So I soup. <laughs> Not really. You know, I, I don't think I show, but yeah. you know, I know my place. Sure. That's why I'm able to sort of say, say sorry to some extent, but mm. if that's not accepted, mm. I sort of stand back a bit and then come back and say, hey man, ish, yeah. I'm sore. Yeah, sure. and, then, and then I I know that I need to stay in my corner for mm. a bit of time. And that's how I I I work with my career. Mm. I ask sometimes, mm. and then they're like, no, you can't play, mm. you know? And then I go and work and I come back and I say, hey, this is what I've done. Mm. You know, can I, can I play? And they're like, um, not yet, mm. you know, mm. and then I go work again, and then the 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 attitude changes over some time, mm. and and that's why I find myself now where I know that there are certain things that I have to go through, sure, and those steps are important for where I want to go. Mm. And, and what steps, like typically, what 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 do those steps look like? Knowing that you are a superstar, where you are, where you coming from. And here you are. You're nothing. You are nothing. Yeah. You know, and you have to start from. You're there many more. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, and and it's quite amazing when you start seeing your name, leaving and many more being like literally written small. And the font. Fly, and the font starts and growing. It starts growing. <laughs> and then start moving up. You know, and then now you can sell out your own show in yes. like a London or whatever. So I understand the process. Mm. You know, and I've made peace with the fact that. I'm like you're saying. I'm I'm in my own space. Mm. You know, I'm I'm doing my own thing. It's lonely at times, but I it has I, to be done. I understand that this is mm. this is what I have. I I only have myself to 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 help. Tell tell us about the Burning Man Festival. Oh, man. what is that and how was <laughs> it for you? Yeah, it was it was one of my most amazing experiences. Mm. You know, where you meet. People who just wanna shut out from the from the whole world, yeah, and they they just wanna have fun. So where is the Burning Man Festival? Burning Man is in like a desert mm. in the U.S. Okay. You know, uh, people travel all over the world to go to the space where it's literally just a desert, and people a desert with sound. It's a desert with sound, but everyone brings their own thing. Yes, and people sort of. Um, pride themselves in making sure that they leave the desert as they found it. Oh, yes. So not even a single paper yeah. that you'll find on the floor. There's no, our now hotel service. Sure. Everyone is like... You bring your tent, you, bring you pack tent, it up, you go back You home. pack it up, you mm. eat, you trade mm. through food. Like you can go to someone and tell them that you're hungry, they'll give you the food. You know, like it's it's a... It's a great experience. Mm. Who did you meet at the Burning Man Festival? I met so many people. Yeah. Bro. I met... Oh, I met so many people mm. and people that have helped me um, get into certain spaces. Yeah. You know, I met the guys from Maxa who are one of the biggest camps at, at Burning Man. Mm. They have like an art car and, sure. and DJs go there and play. Mm. Um, and that um, investment of time ended up getting me to one of the biggest shows in, in Mexico. Sure. You know, I played for like um, 10,000 people, mm. you know. And I met P Diddy there, you know. I met I met. I, P- I, I was waiting for the name drops. Ah, <laughs> but you asked. Me. <laughs> I, I met. I was asking you about the name drops. Yeah, I I met uh, the Kano Music guys um, personally for the first time. Mm. Um, I met a lot of promoters that mm. do stuff all over the world, and I think other people seeing me at Burning Man 
sort of changed how they look at me. Sure. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, we're not about Bakenang and they like just the fed and then yeah, Chai, mm, you know. Mm. But I think the small things that I do for my career, the investments that I make, the mm, time, mm. Um, really help me get to um, where I want to go. Mm. One of the things I love and respect about you that I loved and respected about DJ Monde, may his soul rest in peace, is your ability to network yeah. and to meet the right people, to introduce yourself to the right people, to be intentional in every single thing that you do towards your career. Yeah. I mean, I remember when you were still coming up, I mean, Shimza would do gigs at Joe's Butchery in, in Alex. Yeah. And he'd take whatever budget he had and he'd hire a me, a Christos, an Oskido to bring a crowd so that when he plays after us, there's a massive crowd and then he can show them what he's made of. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the journey he took to build himself. Yeah. And you don't, you don't do that by mistake. <laughs> you have to be intentional about it. Yeah. You can't just say, I want to do a gig and then maybe people will come. Yeah. But if you're strategic because this is what you want to do, that's how you get incremental results. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's how I've been built. Yeah. You know, I've always tried to see the gaps in the market mm. and and obviously knowing how to approach uh, people as sure. well. And it goes back to exactly what I was saying. Mm -hmm. saying um, how do I ask Fresh mm -hmm. to co-sign me without sure. really asking? Exactly. You know? Um, and we're using CDJ 100. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know and and for, for the fact that you guys could see me at least trying, sure. it was easier for you to call me when you had opportunities mm -hmm. for me, you know? And people people love that about people who at least try. Yes. You know, try or but someone will see your 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 efforts, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've I've always done. Sure. Yeah. Now you did a an artist workshop um, at your restaurant last year in Tembisa. Yeah. And one of the things you spoke about when we discussed mental health is the fact that many of us don't know that we need to get help. And often our behavior is the traumatized child that you were that never got healed now acting out as an adult yeah and i found that very very profound yeah talk to us about your journey in healing that child that might have been traumatized um like honestly speaking i've i've never been like a, a like i've never had like crazy moments in sure. my life when mm. like these really affect me sure. you know it's it's the smallest things that happened when i was still young mm. like um when i was like seven if you talk on room on a saturday mm. and there's no one my mom has gone out with her friends mm. my my brothers are like teenagers at sure. that time they have they're gone they're gone i need to stay in the house alone watch tv mm. lock the door mm. you know and then people come back home and and they're sort of drunk and mm. it's like a whole party now someone who feels i was saying I like the music, you know, and you now have to wake up. It's it's those small things mm. that sort of like when I was sitting there alone as a young as a young Shimza, mm. um, I felt like I was sort of like abandoned. Sure. You know? But the the twenty year old or the twenty one year old could make sense of that scenario mm. and can explain to the seven year old to say no. Mm now i have a brain to think of how the world works at seven years old they were not leaving you because of our sure. or they like mm. they don't care about you they're leaving you because there were also adults at the time mm. who needed to be in social spaces with other people mm. it's just unfortunate that it, they didn't have anyone that could take care of you at that time yes so when you start making sense of what the, the child went through yes what yes. the child went through in your teens then you understand the pain and you are able to move the young person in yourself mm. to come and mature at the, at the level of thinking that you are at right now that mm. can make sense of those those um those instances when you are low mm. you know so mm. i think a lot of people need to go back you know move back and ask themselves okay why does it feel this way when this happened mm. And sometimes it takes you back to a small moment that you don't even remember. Unresolved. Yes, mm. and it's unresolved mm. because that young person 
in you, in you is still stuck there and sure. is still trying to make sense of what was going on there before they can move forward. And, and, and sometimes it's something as simple as if your mom and dad were not together and dad says, I'll see you on Saturday. As a child, you hang on to that. Yeah. I'm going to see dad on Saturday. He doesn't live with us, but I know I'm going to see dad on Saturday. Saturday comes, you're looking at the gate, you're looking at the door. Yeah. Dad doesn't arrive. Yeah. Before you know it, it's Sunday. Yeah. And you hang on to that. And then and, and, and before you know it, you don't realize that you've got abandonment issues. Yeah. Or you've got issues with people who don't keep their word, people who don't keep their promises. And it all starts from your childhood. It starts from the childhood. And, and, and unless we can heal that child or find a way of reconciling with that child, yeah. often your acting out as an adult is that child. Is the child. You know, it's, it's the child. And, it, and that's how I look at life. You yeah. know, it's like when I have an argument with someone, I sort of pull back now and I say, actually, why, why is this person acting out? You mm -hmm. know? And then something in me says, they're acting out because maybe I touched a nerve sure. that has not been resolved mm. in their own life, yeah. you know, and then you are able to sort of um, react better in situations, mm. you know, even on socials. When, when you look at people um, who swear at you and, and just act a certain way, mm. you need to understand that it's, it's not about you. Mm. It's about the things that they've gone through that they have not um, um, dealt with. Mm, yeah. mm. We're going to play a game. It's called the Wow Game. Okay. I'll give you an example. Wow, what a country. Which country, in terms of your gigging, will never leave your mind? Ah, I'm in South Africa. Yeah. Ah, it's South Africa. You know, it says. So we're, we're untouchable. Nah, bro, this is one of the best countries in the world, you mm. know. Obviously, with a bit of. Like every now and then, yes. like you like guess it's yeah, yeah once, it's in, a, once, in, a once while, in a while you realize you're in a movie. Yeah, <laughs> but when it comes to groove, yeah, like, like, you know it's <laughs> it's groove, it's it's the food, it's the culture, it's how we live on a day to day, you know. And you you miss the little stuff, you know. You miss the little stuff where you know you can go to a Tasha's and you'll find people who yes. are just there happy to mm. just be around people, you know. Um, in fact, you can go from Tasha's to a Shisanyama in Alex. Exactly. And it's the vibe. You have that option. You have that option, yes. Some places don't have that yeah. option. It's yeah. like, it's a restaurant, they sell croissant, mm. and that's it. Pasha. Pasha. They don't have spatle or sure. whatever, you know, so. Wow, what a copycat. Your daughter is your carbon copy. <laughs> what else does she copy about you? You're nothing, and she yeah. doesn't even love the stuff that I that I do. So she thinks Afro House is rubbish. Ah, she thinks I'm just a person that's away from home for the whole wish. I'm not just that why, you know. Um, but but I love that she she calls me out every now and then. So typically, what would she call you out on? Papa, you are so gone for long. When are you coming back? How do you deal with parental guilt? Because I've been. DJing for the last 30 years. Yeah. I've been a dad for the last 28 years. Sure. It's a horrible feeling. Yeah. When yeah. you hardly see them. Yeah. And you know, like my I've I've gotten to to be able to explain to her the type of work that I do. Mm. She sort of gets it, you mm. know. But when I sometimes have to explain to her that I'm gone for a month. Yeah you can see her starting to be a bit teary. Yeah, you know? it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot for her because mm. um, I've always said, like, though you've never experienced love until you've experienced, like, love that you have for your own kids. Yes, you know? yes. Um, it's and, the, like, and the purpose it, it puts into yeah, your, yeah, you know, yeah. what you do. So for now, it's like, I need to push to really make it where I'm, I'm trying to break into... Um, but at the same time, I need to make sure that I don't lose mm. so many moments with yes. her as she grows up. So many milestones. Yeah. So mm. I try as much as I can when I'm when I'm around to to try and spend time with her. You know, I'm not I'm not the best dad ever, um, but I really try. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow, what an unshazamable! What song did you fail to shazam that you later found out was this song? What song was that? Hey, I don't have one. Either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have one because I've sort of um, gotten it. My, my ear mm. has sort of been able to tell 
through elements on a song. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so I can I can shazam a song, this guy taller, take a, a voice a voice note, mm. and then I know exactly who to send it to. Ah, yes. That, and then that person is, yeah, it's not me, or ah, it's me, uh, but I worked with so-and-so. Sure. You know, it's not out yet, or this or that, but... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any song that I've never been able wow, to. Wow, what a festival. Your mm. favorite festival to play at. That's not Gunye or you. <laughs> I was about to say Gunye. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I played a festival in Amsterdam last year. Mm. Uh, it's called Plain Fest. Sure. Um, that was quite dope, you know. Um, and I think there's so much more that I'm I'm going to to be playing because in, in that space, you mm. start from from clubs, from beach bars to mm-hmm. clubs, mm-hmm. and then playing outdoor small festivals sure. and then going to big festivals. Mm-hmm. So like now I'm, I'm sort of getting into that festival um, thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm starting to see um, um, offers for like your Tomorrowland, yes, you know, yes, but yes, it's yes. like... It's still that side there. Not, not for what you're offered, yes. you know. Um, I'll do it when you... When you see me better. When you see me better. Yes. Yes. So, um, and that's that's one thing that I've learned from my management to say, some things look good on paper, mm-hmm. but for your career, they might hurt you in the long run mm-hmm. because the way you come in is sometimes how they see you. Exactly. Forever. Yes. You know, so... Um, yeah, wait rather until they see your real value. Yeah, I am a yana. When your name can be a bit bigger. Yes, you'll, you'll <laughs> play the other festivals, you know. Yeah. Wow, what a black Twitter moment. Wow, what a black Twitter moment. Yeah, what moments on black Twitter have you always saying, wow, really? Like, I think I've, I've, I've accepted and now have made sense of what black Twitter is, yeah. you know? It's like, today it's your day. Sure. Tomorrow it's my day. Every dog another has a day. day is yeah. another day, yeah. you know? So I, I don't even take it seriously anymore, yeah. you know? It's like... It's just another day for another person, mm. uh, for other people that love drama. Sure. Yeah. Wow, what a milestone. Career milestone that will never leave your head. What? A career milestone that will never leave my head is probably the first competitions that I've won. And mm. you know, I mean, SA Music Conference. Yes. I won my first pair of. Yeah, we made him. Yes. His first pair of. They did. It was because they of did. us. I was, <laughs> I was one of the judges. Yeah. Um, and then the Channel O Next Big Thing competition. Yes. That was that was a, a milestone for me. And now the stuff that are sort of like happening now, you mm. know, where you seeing me sell out a show in London, where you see me on like some of the biggest festivals in the world you know you can see that people are starting to see the value in what i bring and also headlining an opening show of one of the biggest beach bars in the world in ibiza for their opening show yes and i'm the headliner that sort of says i'm sort of like in the right direction Mm. you know when people can can trust that you will deliver on one of their most important nights yes. of the season. Yeah. You know? yeah. Wow, I love touring, but I hate this. Wow, I love touring, but I hate being alone uh, for long periods of time. And it gets lonely on the road. Yeah, it gets it it gets lonely. Mm. You know, it gets it gets frustrating. And I think if you're not mentally fit, mm. you know, and mentally stay away mm. and it will get to you mm. you know and for now na- it took me back to that seven year old yes. that was left in left the house now you're alone in the hotel room. i'm alone in the <laughs> hotel room in a different country with people that don't speak my <laughs> language people coming back you no know? <laughs> so i've had to be able to to deal with that emotionally to say there's a bigger there's a bigger goal here yes. you know and for you to get there for you to be able to afford to take people with you on the road mm. you have to go through this phase mm. you know and that's how I deal with it it's it's still not easy I have to go through the pain of building yes. so that I can carry more people with me yes yes I mean one is. day I'll be private jet team from South Africa everywhere As take my be. whole family As you know and I understand that there is a possibility of mm. that happening because sure. I've seen it with 
the people that have worked hard, like your black coffee, yeah. that is now in a position where they can... He could private jet anywhere, anywhere on the planet will, and be okay. Know? And it's because of the sacrifices that sure. he did. Mm -hmm. And we have that blueprint. We like, it has opened our eyes to say it's possible. We from did it. We, we can did it. Exactly. You know, and it's not to say it's a competition or we want to show anyone that we can also do it, but it's a, it comes from a... I'm inspired. An inspirational mm -hmm. part of my body, you know, like, and, and that's why I sort of like had a bit of a problem with a statement that he made where he was like, when someone is now trying to be you, mm. let them be you and then leave them. W was that, I was like, was that aimed at you? It was, it was a response to a question when he was asked about me, um. you know, and I felt it, it hurts me because mm. I'm like, no, bro, I was not trying to be you. Mm. I was so inspired by what you're doing mm. and what, like your path where you are creating your own thing sure. and your own lane. And I am so inspired about that thing mm. that I'm so interested about how is it that I can create my own path yes. using the path that you've opened for mm. us. You know, it's mm. the same, we play the same music, sure. we come from the same spaces. Mm. And and I, I, I sort of understand maybe how it looked from his sure. end, sure. so from the influence around to say, hey, le, le, this guy is on your tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah you every, know, when you breathe, he breathes. Yeah, when le, you jump, he jumps. Sometimes, le, like he would, yeah, yeah, yeah. one talk. And <laughs> that influence sometimes gets to people. And when 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 that now happens to me, sure. when someone says, in fact, someone said that to you about a DJ in our DJ group. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, and I'm like, no, that person is is probably inspired. Yeah. They're seeing how they can form who they are sure. through being inspired by what I do, you know. And that's now the 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 mature me mm -hmm. trying to make sense of, oh, that's what went wrong with this relationship with me. Mm -hmm. It must never happen to to someone, to someone else, someone else yes. because I know how it feels to exactly. be in that position. Yeah. You know, yeah. Wow, dude, where's my car? <laughs> what happened to your car? Did you find your car? <laughs> no, no, bro. You know that was the most weirdest thing, man. You know, and like, I think I. So you live in an estate. Yeah. That has security. That has security in and out. Yes. And your car was driven and out. My car was driven out. You know, they broke. They broke in through the back window. Yeah. Uh, obviously, because I think I live in a secure state. So yeah. I left my keys in the house because sure. I was I was leaving um, for a tour. Mm -hmm. And I came back and my car was not there. Yeah. You know? um, but I have to give it to... You know, the, the, the craziest thing is that mm -hmm. I had just switched insurance companies. Oh. That month, and my new insurance had, had, in. had not even, no, it had kicked in, ah, okay. but they had not taken their first premium of my account. And now they must replace hey, a G-Wagon. You know, and I really need to give it to, like, to Discovery. Like, okay, so Discovery's, no, no, shout out. no, dude, I'm with Discovery. Yeah. Discovery and Shaw yeah. are absolutely the best. incredible. Yeah, they're the best. And I feel like if it was anyone else, mm. they would have try to look for a loophole sure. to see how they cannot pay to sure. say why would you leave your kids in the house and it's like but yeah I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know yeah. um and they were very understanding they helped me they understood mm -hmm. how emotionally um um toiling that was on sure. me, you know and they were like bro it's, mm. it's we got cool. you we've yeah. got you and, and and we haven't been paid to say this but discovery yeah. insure is in fact because i was with another insurance company yeah. so i had i think it was three cars and a motorbike and I was paying almost 14 grand. And Discovery was like, no, come here, give us eight. Yeah, no, I'm going to go back. And yeah? I'm going to go back to insurance and say, yeah, I, yeah. you need to cut. Need by to cut. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but your medical aid has to be there also. Yeah, everything. My portfolio is with and your life stuff. everything. Wow. Everything, everything. Discovery insurance. And like my, Send money. <laughs> my, friends, my friends are like, bro, you could get a better deal. I've got friends that work for Momentum. I get calls every day. And I'm like, mm. I'm happy here. It's yeah, I get sharp. Yeah. You know, I'm I've good. discovered what I need. Yes. We made it discover. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Send money. <laughs> Finally, yeah. wow, what a woman. What is it about her? 
Um, she's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah. I like little Paya. Sure. You know, um, matured. Mm. You know, um, you know when you when you test someone, mm. you know, test mm. that more to, to an extent where they're like, when you know Rao, she's going to break. Sure. And it's like, she's there. I got you. Yeah. Mm. And that's what I like. Sure. Yeah. What's next for Ashley Shimza Rapala? Um, what's next for me is is what makes sense for where I am right mm. now. You know, if it makes sense that I need to, um, through everything that I'm doing, I can be a TV producer mm. for music shows. If I can um, work on my construction stuff, if I can um, get more trucks for my contract with mm. the uh, coal companies that I work with, mm. if it makes sense for me to open up a restaurant, another restaurant, which is going to be a, a like growth from the hangout, if it means I do another event with mm. other young upcoming guys to say what is it that we can do, where I can share my experience with you guys, mm. if I can create more jobs, that's what's next. So you're building, you're moving, and moment. Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing about movement, momentum, is once you're moving, you don't want to slow down. Hundred percent. Because there's movement. Yeah. And what I realized is that the more you move, yeah. the more people want to be with you yes. when you're moving. Yes. And then now other opportunities come mm. where a person that owns a franchise of a pick and pay sure. is like. I actually like you, mm. you know, like, what can we do together? Yes. This is what I do, mm. you know, would you be interested in being part of this? I can help you do this, mm. you know, because they're seeing that you are a driven person that's level-headed, mm. that is not excited about stuff, and they can they can help you. And mm. that's exactly what probably has helped me with my DJing and my music career, where, like, a fresh will say, I know that if I can give this boy an opportunity, mm -hmm. I won't end up with egg on my face, sure. you know? Mm -hmm. I know that he's going to take that opportunity and use it not only for himself, mm -hmm. but to also help other people, sure. you know? And that's why every year, like, in, in my heart, whether COVID or not, I, I have to go back and and check or sure. you know mm. um, what you need you know like sure. even go hang out the the people that that work at hangout they don't see me as a boss sure. you know like i'm there you know i always yeah. wear sneakers baggy pants and and i chat to them as as humans mm. you know and mm. they feel like they own the place they belong is, exactly mm. you know and once people have a sense of belonging in in your business they take it as their own, yes. you know. Some some then take it far and steal from you, yeah. uh, but the honest ones. But others appreciate. show up and really show yes. up. It's not just gaspaning and I'm gonna nap in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm here so, and I'm gonna work. I'm gonna deliver. So even at hangout, man, the sure. culture at hangout is so amazing. Mm. Where you are seeing these young, these young guys from from my township who have taken the opportunity that I've mm. created for them. And it's working for them, mm. you know, they can provide for their families, mm. you know, and they're keeping the place clean, they're sure. making sure that it's running. When we do have problems as stuff, mm. you won't see them tweeting, hey, what, 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 because they understand. It's that. handled, it's dealt with. Exactly, mm. you know, so I'm, I'm really grateful for the people that are around me sure. and the, the, the team that I've mm. built around me, my friends. Um, and the guys are just... We're out of time. I'm being shouted at. Finally, <laughs> the one-man show is back in December. Yes. When do tickets go on sale? They've been on sale since Jan. Okay. You know, so I'm pushing the whole year. Um, the biggest show is, is back in Tembisa, and mm. I'm hoping to get most of my friends to come through and okay. perform. And, and so where in Tembisa? It's at Misaring Stadium. Misaring it's Stadium. always okay. been on the 25th of December. Um, tickets are available at Web Tickets, and yeah. And on the morning, Christmas morning, uh, Shimza does a whole party for the kids. Yeah. Uh, Batim Bisa, they come, they have fed a meal, Christmas gifts, some nati, yeah. and then later on the adults take over. Yeah. And then in January, he gets shoes for school kids. This man is busy. This man is driven. This man could teach you a thing or two about not only being effective but being memorable and delivering. That's how you stay Shimza busy. <laughs> the big question is. Are you Shimza busy? Will I be in trouble if I ask you to say yours in music, Shimza? Yeah, I would go and listen to my mama. You just messed up this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs>
But at least I know that I need to cut it before it ends. So, uh, dear at home, uh, I said it to myself. He didn't say it. <laughs> uh, yours in music, fresh and shimza. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ. No, not DJ. No, he, ups- it, he gets upset. <laughs> no, not DJ. <laughs> not everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, shimza is leaving the building. Thank you for tuning in. And that's the show for this week. Hope you all enjoy the festive weekend ahead. Yes, that means you too, atheist. Yes, we're no more done. And hope you wake up on Monday with your eggs in whatever way you like them. Chocolate covered, scrambled, or just unfertilized. Enjoy it all. Wishing you all a wow week. Have a great week in spite of yourselves. Need to shout out to Amp Studios. Um, love the space. If you've got a podcast, uh, you're looking for a creative space, Amp Studios is the place for you. They've got great staff and great coffee. Africa Podcast Network, shout out to you guys. Pezulu Works for the cinematography, audio engineer, artist, the floor, Fraser, and our guests, Tumi Morake and Shimza. Shout out to our creative director, Kuvesh Mohan, and show produce, producer, Gelezo Mudisa Gang. You can email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. And we're out. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week.